Kia is finally giving the market a relatively affordable three-row crossover electric vehicle here in the form of the EV9. But if you plan on doing a lot of highway road tripping, you're not gonna see the same range numbers as you'd get from the mixed driving number published by the EPA. But how badly does the EV9's boxy shape actually hurt it at 70 miles per hour? Today we find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And today we've got the real world highway fuel economy test on the 2024 Kia EV9. In this test, we're gonna head out on the highway and do 50 miles out and 50 miles back, averaging 70 miles per hour to get you a realistic range figure for this midsize crossover. And before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. Now I will actually be doing the test tonight in the evening so that traffic is low and we can do a steady state uninterrupted sort of test, but we're getting the car charged up here right now. I'm actually filming the sound test and the infotainment test, so you can check those linked below if you'd like to see them. But so far I have been really happy with the EV9. I've only had it here for uh, less than a day, I suppose, but there is a lot to like about it and I'm really hoping it does well in this GT line trim in our range testing. You can see some of the aspects like these wheels that look particularly aerodynamic with some, this is actually just a, a plastic wheel cover, much like you get on a Tesla. When you lock it, these door handles go in. So I, despite the roof rails and uh, like I said, the boxy shape, this should be decently aerodynamic and I'm sure they've done their darndest to try to get decent numbers even on the highway. But if you do wanna see more on the car, check the link below. We've got many more videos. So why do we do this test? Well, the EPA's highway range test, which gives this EV9 about 220, you, you might read 200, I think it's 276 according to the window sticker. Let's see. Yeah, this GT line has 270 miles from the EPA, but that is mixed driving. If you're doing highway only, it's estimating about 220 miles, but that test only averages 48 miles per hour. What we wanna know is what sort of number you can realistically expect here in the real world, cruising just steady state, 70 miles per hour. So in order to do that, we're gonna go out and we're gonna charge this all the way up. I'm gonna leave right from my house. So there's gonna be a few miles of mm, kind of mixed driving, about 50 mile per hour roads before we get to the highway. And then on the highway, we're gonna do 100 miles, come back, charge it all the way up, see how much electricity we used and see what sort of uh, battery percentage we have when we get back and see how much, uh, what sort of efficiency the car measures when we get home. Now, a few things to note for tonight, outside temperature will be listed uh, below already here in the video, but it's probably about low 50s or so. The tire pressures are going to be set. Their door placard, what do we have on this one? 38 PSI, I'm actually surprised not a little bit higher. So we're gonna be set at 38 PSI cold. And we're gonna run the climate control at 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Typically for the colder weather EV tests, we do 67, hotter weather we do 73 and the gasoline cars we do 73, but we'll give a little bit easier on the heating system here. And I'm gonna have one degree of seat heat on. All right, I'm going to catch up with you at the end of the test, but in the meantime, enjoy this time lapse of the entire trip. Coming into the end of the range test here in the Kia EV9. I am pleasantly surprised to see that we are averaging 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That is 0.3 miles per kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour more than the EPA expected we'd be getting. So we've covered 98 miles at this point. So 64% battery left. So obviously easily gonna break 200 miles of range should 
theoretically be getting around 240 to 250 by the time we get back to the house and uh, have it all charged up, see what our final numbers are. That's pretty darn good. Aside from the actual efficiency standpoint, this is a nice place to be on the highway, mostly. It's decently quiet. Right now we're on a pretty loud section of concrete highway, but it's pretty decently quiet, especially when you're on asphalt sections of road. The steering wheel's got a nice shape to it. It's a decent amount of adjustability there. The seats have a nice amount of comfort, and every 45 minutes or so, they, it moves the lumbar in and out to kind of readjust your back and, and get you to not be slouching so much, sort of sit in a different position. That's kind of cool. What has frustrated me is actually the active lane keeping and adaptive cruise control systems. And we drive a lot of different cars, and I do this test with virtually all of them. This one has been frustrating, and that's strange because Kias are usually quite good. I mean, Hyundai, Kia, familiar with both of them. I don't know why this person's doing 65 miles per hour in the left lane. Thanks, buddy. Kia and Hyundai are both really good with their systems. In fact, I just had a Hyundai Tucson last week, and its active lane keeping and adaptive cruise control is fantastic. But this one, even on its closest setting, is conservative and it's slowing me down very gradually very far from the vehicles in front it's possible it's because i'm in eco mode maybe that's uh trying to slow me down sooner so to be more efficient but that has been frustrating and then it's been losing the lane lines a lot we'll have a situation where there will be an on-ramp that comes on and then all of a sudden that, that lane line sort of picks up and the car will jerk itself over in the middle that's that's like seven years ago sort of uh, behavior. That shouldn't be happening in a brand new 2024 car, especially from a brand that's had such a good active lane keeping system for so long. So that's been strange. But other than that, the Meridian sound system is a little bit of a disappointment as well. Check the link below if you want to see our full eval, but wasn't super satisfied with it after doing the members only tracks. Um, yeah, so we're gonna get it back to the house see what our final uh, usage figures are and how much electricity the car takes and we'll get some final calculations tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, our Grizzly Charger failed to charge the Kia EV9 back up after our fuel economy test. And I don't know why I've been having issues with some of the new vehicles with that Grizzly Charger. It charges up our Chevy Bolt perfectly fine all the time. But for some reason, some of these new vehicles have been throwing it off, and I plug the car in, and I come out the next morning, and it hasn't done any charging. So, we don't have an actual uh, amount of electricity put back into the battery to do calculations with. However, we can still figure out a good amount of our efficiency based on the percentage of battery used and the mileage traveled. And one thing that makes the EV9 even nicer for calculating uh, kind of EV range and for us EV sort of nerds, efficiency nerds, is that it's a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So any percentage you see drop on your battery charge level, that equates to one kilowatt hour of usage. So it's, it's very nice to be able to do quick mental math of, okay, for example, my charger at home charges this car at 9.4 kilowatts. That means I'm getting 9.4 percentage of charge for every hour that I'm charging the vehicle. It's very, very nice to be able to do that. On our highway trip, we traveled 105.2 miles, about 100 of that was highway, and then the 5.2 getting to and from the highway. So 105.2 miles traveled, and we used 39% of the battery. We came back in at 61% state of charge. So if we do 105.2 miles traveled divided by the 39%, we're coming down to 2.7, or really more specifically, no, I guess it does round up to 2.70, uh, miles traveled per percentage of battery used, which in this car also comes out to kilowatt hours. However, the vehicle is telling us we only got 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. And since I like to err a little bit on the side of caution, because obviously you can't be running over your, uh, your amount of charge left when you need to get back, we're going to go with a 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour figure here for the EV9 running at highway speeds, which is still pretty darn good, especially considering the EPA's figure is a good bit lower than that. So if we go with our 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour times, again, very easy math, the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, we're getting a 260 mile highway cruising range at 70 miles per hour in fairly ideal conditions here in the Kia EV9 GT line, which means a few things. One, if you're getting one of the more efficient models, the uh, the all-wheel drive, what is it, not, uh, the wind all-wheel drive, or especially any of the rear-wheel drive models with the smaller wheels, 
you're going to be easily able to, fit, to hit that 260 mile figure, probably do more so. That also means in mixed driving, you're going to be able to get well over that 260 mile figure. And it means that this estimated range figure on the dash is pretty darn accurate. You're able to drive this car around and it's not like owning a Tesla where you kind of have to figure you realistically got about 70 or 80% of what the vehicle says you're going to be able to get four miles until empty. No, it's pretty darn accurate. It does seem like Kia might have uh, maybe even lowered the number a little bit voluntarily in order to achieve that figure in all sorts of driving. Now, obviously, if you're going to be doing 85 miles per hour on the highway, that's going to go down dramatically. You're going to be lucky to be getting about 200 or so miles of range. But hey, I have been very happy with the overall range figures in this car. I will say that active lane keeping is bothering me, not only on that highway trip here for the test, but more of the highway driving I've done since having the vehicle. But overall, a lot to like about Hall and Family with the EV9. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the EV9, check the link below. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.